Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Tim Hammy at First Summit God on this Wednesday, January 18th. I hope you're doing great. This week we're dealing with the Do You Have AAA Agreement, Alignment, and Assignment. And, and today, yesterday we dealt with agreement. Today we're going to deal with alignment. Hallelujah. An easy way to describe the kingdom of God, it, it is to say it's wherever the rule and reign of Jesus are established. In heaven, God's rule and reigns are always perfectly established. But to see it demonstrated here on earth, we must allow Him to align us with His will in heaven. Agreement with God brings us to a place where we say, Yes, Lord, it is for Your glory that I live. I want Your will to be done in my life above all else. Alignment by God by God is the place where he begins to put things in order so that his kingdom can come into our lives. God begins to bring his power and reveals to us with his perfect will is so that we can start moving forward a clear and precise aim. Alignment is a place where we are positioned by coming into agreement with God. Uh, alignment. Man, if your car is out of alignment, it shakes, it rattles, it, it, it just, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it doesn't work very well. It shakes all over the place. If you're not in a alignment, if you're not straight pointed, a long time ago, I, I, I used to go out with some friends and we used to shoot some bow and, bows and arrows and and I remember going out with some of my friends and we were shooting at the bale of hay and, and I'm not a very good shot. Uh, if you ever wanted me to go hunting with you, it, it, you would not do very well to take me with you. Anyway, so I was I was pulling the bow back, and I was aiming. I was looking through the sights, and I was really I, I was aiming towards the bale of hay with the with the target on there. And I was aiming, and I was aiming. I, I let go, and I gave new meaning to hitting the broad side of a barn, because on that day I pierced that side of the barn, and it stuck in there so hard that that we had to literally yank it out because I was not in alignment. My sights weren't aligned just right. And our sights, your and I's sight, need to be aligned on what the Father has for us. He needs to direct our paths. He needs to guide our, our every footsteps. And you say, well, Pastor, how do you do that? You get in His Word. You begin to fast and pray. You begin to pray and, and say, God, I want what you want. And, and watch what He does. Hallelujah. See, one day Jesus went up to a mount, mountain named called, called the Mount of Transfiguration to pray, and he took Peter, James, and John with him, Matthew 17. While there, Jesus was transformed into his glorified state, and Peter, James, and John had a front row seat. I still can't imagine what that must have been like. These guys had walked with Jesus every day, eaten meals with him, and listened to him teach. They were already convinced that he was Messiah. But then they saw Jesus' glorified state. With a mind-blowing experience, and incredible as that was, Jesus did not allow them to just soak in their mountaintop experience. He quickly got their minds focused on kingdom business and got them moving down the, the mountain. See, the disciples didn't know it, but a man in desperate need was waiting for them at the bottom of the mountain. This, this should serve as a reminder that to us that our encounters with the glory and the presence of God are indeed not only to bless us, but to fire us up to go out and make a difference by reaching out and making a difference by reaching out with compassion to people who are lost and hurting. Listen, Matthew 17, he said, When they had come to the multitude, a man came to him kneeling down and saying, Lord, have mercy on me, for he is epileptic and suffering severes, for, severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. And then it goes on... Jesus answered, he says, why, why did your disciples not be able to, why, why his disciples says, why haven't we been able to heal him? And he responds, Jesus responds to this, he says, 
O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here and me and rebuke the demon. It came out of him. The child was cured from that very hour. The disciples came to Jesus probably and says, Why could we not cast him out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, If you have faith as a mustard, you will see this mountain move from here to there. And it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. See, once again, God is saying that prayer and fasting is a prerequisite. God is saying that we need to pray and fast. And as we work with God, as we're moving with God, here's one verse I want to give to you. is Matthew 9.23. It says, All things are possible through Christ to him who believes. It all possible to him who believes. Let's pray. Lord, I pray right now that you give each person a great day. I pray that you bless their Wednesday. And I pray that you give them the opportunity to share the gospel with somebody this week, Lord, this day, Lord, in your name. Amen. God bless you.